Hello and welcome back to Mark's House and Garden UK. Today I'm on the Abbeywood Estate and I'm visiting Abbeywood Gardens which are adjoined to Abbeywood House. Now the house and gardens can be used as a wedding venue and it is an RHS partner garden but bear in mind that the RHS partner gardens set their own rules on which days RHS members get discount so do check the website because this is not free to RHS members on every day of the week I think at the moment it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays so I'm going to have a look around the garden get a map when you come in and it's numbered so we'll do it in number order starting in the tropical garden then we'll move to the pool garden now you enter the tropical garden through this beautiful conservatory where you can actually have lunch I did have lunch before I had a garden tour and the lunch I have to say was excellent and not bad value now it costs seven pounds to enter these gardens if you're an adult we're now in the tropical gardens and there are some incredible tropical plants I'm going to waffle whilst I wander around and I might just identify a few of these plants and those which I can't identify I apologize for perhaps you can identify them <clears throat> yourself but some wonderful very large leaf plants here now I recognize that one there that's a tetrapanax reassuring to see that their trunk also died during the winter time we'll just wander all the way around this tropical garden and then we'll venture out into the pool garden enjoy these wonderful images of some beautiful plants on this incredible day it's June I don't know why I'm saying it's incredible we should be entitled to expect nice weather in June but unfortunately this June has been a little bit disappointing some nice wooden obelisks there in the middle of the garden and then I'm going to go it's almost symmetrical this I'm going to go to the right hand side of the garden looking at the conservatory and show you a forest of uh, tetrapanics which the main trunks did not make it through the winter look at that now these are tetrapanics there's a there's one that's i think been put in slightly more recently really damaged by the frost but the trunks have been left in and i think they make an incredible feature really aren't they wonderful some beautiful plants here now that there is a paulonia just put one of those in my garden paulonias can grow incredibly quickly and the best way to control them is to pollard them and that's exactly what's happened here to this one can you see the trunk there has been pollarded year after year huge big trunk and quite a small tree some arum lilies here oh now there's an interesting flower spike over here to show you in the shade this is one of those plants whose flower stinks of rotting flesh and there's the flower spike for it this looks like it's about to open it might well be opening in the next few days at which point i'm assured that this part of the garden will be another an unpleasant place to be one around the back some lovely walls to give shelter now i have done a bit of a recce and i can show you now a sago palm which was left out unfortunately again fallen victim to the weather the cold Right, let's now venture back out and have a look at the pool garden. Now the pool garden is accessed through the centre of this lovely octagonal pergola, which is on a circular patio. We've got one of those circular patios at home. Let's just enjoy the overall vista before we get up close and personal. So it's again, there's a lovely axis running right the way through, giving you a long view. And then this pool, the pool garden is symmetrical on left and right but around that access. But that, the centre of that pool also gives another long view. We'll be going through there in a moment, but let's enjoy this pool. Isn't it wonderful? Bridge going over the middle and then to the left, a lovely formal pool with some wonderful borders. I think that's Copper Beach uh, and you. And there's a lovely seating area at the far end in fact why don't we venture up there and have a look and look back
the water is green and murky and I can see movement in it and I know that there's quite a large fish in here somewhere there's its tail just sticking out of the water there's, there's several of them I like the way they've put these rocks here that's clearly in case a hedgehog should fall in it needs to get out again wonderful lovely yew hedges all the way around the edge of this space some beautiful incredibly well tended herbaceous borders with grasses tall grasses wonderful i want to give you a long view of the pond but some of the visitors have just stepped on that bridge that i've walked across so i shall walk down here and show you an urn which is nestled in one of the borders down here and, uh, and then we'll look back at the long view when those other people have stepped off that bridge. I'm a bit sensitive about getting other people on my videos for several reasons, for their own privacy. And also because I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. So when they vacated this space, which is actually now all mine, I can look back. Look at that lovely urn there. Sat about seven foot tall, that sat in the middle of a border. And here we are, we'll spin now, round now, very carefully, and look back up that long pond. Isn't that wonderful? Beautiful. Yes, I'm tempted, and I will do to just circumvent it, just to give you a bit of an idea of how long it is. Isn't that beautiful? And look at these wonderful white irises near the bridge. We're going back down the other side in a moment, because I'm going to take you to the chapel garden, which is actually... A continuation of this long narrow vista um, if you were to sit on that bench there and look back you would be able to see the little chapel that's built in the chapel garden I don't know whether my camera will pick it up but it's through a gap over there and we'll go back now and we'll venture through that gap look at that aren't they beautiful in this wonderful bright June sunlight ah, the water is green but you know I actually love that it's green because there's nothing covering the surface and the light and the heat penetrating the surface causes that green you could spend thousands on filtration if you wanted to I like it you go to France and all the carp ponds there are green like this I think the fish like it Evidence of fish everywhere. There's one just swum past, just raised its tail out of the water there. You can possibly see it. Let's follow it along. Look at that. Quite a large fish anyway. Right, let's go through that gap. Have a look at another little pond in the chapel garden. Then we'll wander along what I think they call the, uh, the Arbor Walk down to the Prairie Garden. And there's the chapel in the distance, surrounded by mature woodlands some shade loving borders here and here again is another individual little pond look beautiful irises water slightly stagnant full of blanket weed i have blanket weed in my pond at home i just leave it it's part of the natural cycle of things uh, as a pond wakes up for the spring and the summer too much light you get these blooms but look there look all the way through that gap there is that bench in the distance and we're now we'll have a look at this chapel and then we'll go to the next number on the map look at that wonderful isn't it so the next number on the map is the pergola walk which you are about to experience i do like a pergola so we step through here that's the rear of the yew hedge where that long narrow pond is into a small wooded area with a lovely secluded little bench seat there can you see and then out here into the pergola walk we'll go along the pergola walk then we'll end up going down some herbaceous borders down to the prairie garden well, incredible really Quite a simple structure really, just brick towers with wooden beams along the top and they've been able to use that to create an environment for all kinds of climbing roses. I can smell them. Oh, 
I love the smell of roses. Fuchsias. I don't know, is that crocosmia? I guess. Wonderful. And this pergola walk continues up ahead. Again, symmetrical down this central axis. Going that way in one direction and that way in the other direction. I'm not dwelling too long on the left hand view because there's a group of people again and I don't want to impose. In a moment we will turn right onto that lawn, experience the rest, the rest of that herbaceous border with those conifers and venture down to the prairie garden. Then after the prairie garden I'm going to wander to the back of the big house, the Abbeywood house which is the, the wedding venue. Look at this, isn't a lawn in the British summertime a wonderful sight to behold, especially when it's been well tended. Lovely woodlands there. There is a woodland garden through there by the way which you generally can go and walk around but today it's not open and there is the big house. We'll come back to that in a moment. I've got a little secret garden to show you when we get down there. Um, let's wander down to this prairie garden. Now prairie garden, what would you expect to see in a prairie garden? Well I would expect to see grasses and red up pokers, that kind of planting. Maybe salvias. Well you're not going to be disappointed because that's what we're exactly what we're about to see. When I left the house this morning, it was cold and wet. I've got a coat on and a jumper. Now the sun is cracking the flags and I'm boiling hot and I probably look a bit strange with all these clothes on when everyone else is now wearing shorts and t-shirt. But anyway, let's get back to the plot. I think these are salvias. And again, borders cut into a lawn. Um, almost creating a maze effect that you can wander around and through um, with grasses. I think I've seen Schifflera, some mature trees in the distance with lots of different colours and textures to give the depth. It just makes it, doesn't it? I think. Um, again, you've got the grass to wander on, which on a day like this is totally accessible. And this brings you down to the bottom end of the garden, uh, which is a field essentially with a horse in it. Look. Again, oh look, and there's an interesting thing, a broom. So there we go, prairie garden. An impressive prairie, I have to say. Lovely, well-maintained features here. Some, now I call these Red up pokers. There's a, there's a posh name for these, and I can't remember it. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I love the way that all this orange colour is kind of grouped together. Aren't they nice? Let's have a closer look. But look at the depth of field there with all those oranges. And I think this is some kind of sweet fennel. Yes, it is. It smells of fennel. So it is. It's a fennel. And that's carried all the way through this border here. Um, you get the depth, but there's actually a path there that you can walk up. Beautiful. I'm going to point the camera down to the grass because there's a group of visitors here and I don't want to get them on. So I'm going to point the camera down at the grass and then walk over to the big house. Now this on the map is described as the, the house terrace and lawn, but it's not always accessible. Today it is accessible, so I'm allowed to have a look. And they've pulled the barrier back. This is a wedding venue. Now, can you imagine having a wedding breakfast in there and being able to spill out onto this lawn and having access to those wonderful gardens down there and through the back. I mentioned a secret space. There are no no entry signs. There's nothing telling me I can't show you this. It's on the map so I'm going to show it you at the risk of getting 
reprimanded by the staff but through here into this little woodland there's an old disused abandoned swimming pool it's up here we'll just have a sneaky peek because there's something incredibly romantic about it i think it's over this fence here look at that signs of a bygone era isn't it really an old pool i watch a, a guy called the pool guy on social media who goes to houses and does them up and this is a classic case for him surrounded in these hedges there's a little pool house over there in the trees only a short walk from the big house which is just there but at the moment stagnant green disused and I think quite romantic. Anyway, I feel a bit naughty coming here. So let's go back to the main part of the garden. I'm going to show you in a moment a holiday cottage which is overlooking the woodland. And it's called, I think, Woodside Holiday Cottage. And again, I'm going to show it you because whenever I come to gardens like this, and I, I'm aware that they are kind of independent gardens, I'm always aware of the fact that these places operate with a profit and loss account and often resources are scarce so if I can do anything in one of these videos to try and sort of boost the coffers by selling it a little bit and I can assure you I'm not and don't have a commercial relationship with this place but it might just I don't know help them get a booking we're all in the gardening business at the end of the day, so um, I'll put the link to this place in the description box below this video. We're going to go through a little bit of woodland and we'll have a look at the, the main woodland from a distance, but today we're not allowed to enter. It's off limits, I think for safety reasons. I think there might have even been some storm damage and obviously safety first. Um, you do get the feeling of a woodland here. It's wonderful and cool under these trees. Um, along this little track here, look at the way those tall trees just line the edge of this little track and create a little gateway through the centre. That there, behind that copper beech, I think is a private garden for the main house. We're not allowed in. Those are the woodlands over there in the distance. Quite near Chester this, and uh, Cheshire, so if ever in this neck of the woods, well worth a little trip out. As I, get, as I say, check the, um, check the website for opening times, and also if you're expecting any RHS discounts, check the website. I was expecting to get in for free today, um, but my mistake, I didn't check the website, and I've come on a Monday, and it's not free for RHS members on a Monday. But at the time of going to press, as I'm recording this, it's only seven pounds per adult anyway. So, and you only get the member anyway. So it's only cost me seven pounds for my other half who's had to pay. Um, it's, paid, it's cost us 14 pounds to get in. And we've had a lovely lunch as well. That's the holiday cottage. Um, looks to me like there might be two. Woodside. Woodside by name and Woodside by nature. I'm not going to peer through the windows because there might be someone in a state of undress enjoying the holiday in the holiday cottage. Right, this is a gap that takes you through to the main house, the main house frontage it's called on the map. You are allowed through here because it's on the map and it's numbered. So we'll wander through. Imagine if this was your private personal residence well the first thing i would say is you'd have to have a few cash a few bob in the bank to to be able to afford it it's a beautiful residence uh i admire people who have used houses like this and created opportunities um, like creating a, a, an open garden or a, a wedding venue um I'm going round now towards the front entrance to the actual garden and uh, I'm going to show you into quite a large conservatory and then the rose garden which is round the front of the conservatory. 
Now, I was hoping to take you into that conservatory there, but in fairness, there's a funeral tea happening and obviously I'm not so insensitive to impose. So we'll just get a view from the outside. But again, it's one of the ways that Abbey Wood has made an opportunity. Um, there's a tennis court here and then beyond that is a woodland garden that you can go around and plenty of parking and I had a lovely lunch here so I'll put some images of the lunch I had and as I say hopefully if you get the opportunity do come and visit and that's all for now and that's the end of this garden tour and I'll see you soon for some more garden tour adventures bye for now